Do you remember your first interaction with Patino? Uh, yeah, I do. <laughs> over, <laughs> over, in person, in person, or over the phone. I uh, both. Let's hear. Let's hear. Because I assume he called you first. Yeah, he did. He called me. Uh, told me it was Rick Patino. When I first heard, I was jumping up and down. It was crazy. <laughs> I, I, like what the hell he doing calling me? And so um, he called me. Said he wanted to come watch me play. And so they had set up an open run at my, at my old high school and a bunch of the top uh, basketball players in the city, high school players in the city, got together, played, uh, pick up, you know, cause we had a number of division one athletes come out at the same time, a uh, high major uh, division one athletes in high school in Louisville. And so we had got together, we played pick up and honestly, I didn't even play good. I didn't, even, I, I didn't play well at all, but he had <laughs> already had his mindset that he was going to offer me a scholarship anyway. And so um, first time I got to interact with him, he came in with his long uh, trench coat on. And, you know, so he's <laughs> moving, cache walking in, and, you know, shook my hand, talked to me and, uh, you know, say, I'm offering you a scholarship, this and that. And that was it. That's where I knew I was going. Were you, was it, was it more, I, I'm always so interested, especially with the Hall of Fame coaches, like, you know, Patino and Calipari and Krzyzewski and, and Roy Williams, like, was it intimidation or was it like pure excitement or, or, or out of body experience? Or what was, what do you remember about just like how that felt? Uh, now how, what felt like, just like, I know you said you're excited. Like this is Rick freaking Patino talking to you, you know, like he's, he's interested in you. Yeah, no, man, it was, it, it was super crazy. It took me a while to get my brains together, man, because like I said, I was excited. I was jumping up and down and I, you know, I just couldn't <laughs> believe it was him on the phone, man, you know, because you know, I, I was a big fan of, you know, Derek Anderson. And so all I remember is like, man, he coached Derek Anderson and Ron Mercer. And I just remember that, that tandem. And, and I'm like, you know, that was the first thing that came to my mind. Like, I want to be like, you want to be like that tandem. That's what I was, you know, that's what I was thinking about. <laughs> and just the number of guys that he, you know, went on to produce to, to play professional ball. So um, it was a no brainer for me once he called. What do you think is, and I, I realize it's probably hard to pick one, but what would you say is the biggest thing or a couple things that you learned from, from playing with, uh, for Rick Pitino? Mental toughness, mental toughness. Uh, that was the biggest thing that I picked up. It just, you know, regardless of whatever's going on, uh, everything is all in mindset, uh, physical, mental. Uh, you know, if you have mental toughness, you can do or accomplish anything. And so that was the biggest thing I took away from him. Um, and just I just love his competitive nature. You know, I was already a competitive person, but, you know, his competitive nature really rubbed off uh, on not only on me, but everybody on the team, man. And, and he sort of take on his personality. Uh, uh, by any means, by any means. And so that was the thing that we went across long. You got to get it done by any means. You know, it, it may not be textbook, but as long as you get it done, that we got to get it done. I remember even as a media guy, being in the basketball facility the day after a loss at Louisville is like you're walking on eggshells. Like you, you're – you just – everybody's in it. Everybody's afraid of, <laughs> of the next step because Patino is so mad about it. I know as he got older, right, this is well after your time. I think Russ Smith probably had as big a role as anyone in, in easing him, easing him down a little bit from uh -huh. after losses, but famous, famous for being tough to tough to uh, tough handling his team's losses after the games. Right, right, right. <laughs> he was, yeah, it, it was, man. After a loss, man, it was just like, man, you just hope you didn't go to practice the next day. <laughs> I mean, our, our, right after the game, you know, it was a time where we we did go and have to have practice right after the game. But uh, you just knew he was competitive and he was fiery and, 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 you know, he was liable to say anything to you after a loss, man. He just, he, he didn't like losing. He didn't like losing. And so that was the one thing that really, uh, really sort of embedded in us that will to win and, and just not wanting to lose and not, you know, taking losing kindly, like, oh, it's just a loss. Not, no, we didn't enjoy losing at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I could see how that would have a good effect on, on teams. If, if it's the right mentality for the players, it could have a good effect on, on the team. Um, right. Let's talk about that run, that 2005 run. Say you're at, I don't know, a Christmas party, you're at an office party somewhere or something like that. And you get cornered by a Louisville fan who wants to know your like lasting favorite moment or memory from that 
from that run? Like, what's your story? What do you, what's your go-to thing that you would tell them from that 2005 uh, team's run in March? Uh, my story that I always talk to is about the halftime speech when we play West Virginia. That's one thing people always want to know is like, what did Patino say to you guys uh, at halftime during the West Virginia <laughs> game when you were down 20? That, you, I mean, it's, it's at least once, once a month, man, somebody's asking me, like, what, did, what, did, what did Patino say to you guys, man? And you guys came out in the second game. I said, honestly, man, he didn't say anything. Really? He, 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 didn't, he didn't say, say a word? No. Not much, man. It was more so the guys. It was more so the, the players amongst us uh, speaking. Ellis really got up and spoke and, uh, you know, really poured out his heart. You know, Coach was like, we scrapping the press book. We actually got into a back and forth with Coach. Uh, coach was like, you know, we can't press. We can't do this. And we was like, hey, man, hell with that. This is what we're doing. He's like, well, we ain't got <laughs> enough players. And like, man, that's what we're doing. <laughs> so we was actually arguing with the coach at halftime, man. And so uh, – you know, we were just going that we were going to go out. We were going to go out and, and, and the balls of glory, man. And so I know for me, uh, I was thinking, I'm like, man, first half, like, man, I didn't even hardly get any shots up. So I'm like, oh, man. So I knew the second half I was coming out shooting. So uh, it just turns out everything everything worked out in our favor. But, yeah, that's one thing people always ask me about. What Patino say to you guys at halftime? Like, we really didn't say anything. We had to scrap, scrap our game plan, go to a whole new game plan, just whatever it takes to win. Well, I think that's a sign of, of an experienced squad to be able to, to be able to have that mature of a conversation in the locker room right. and to have um, the respect of your coach to be able to say, no, that we disagree with you. We want to do X, Y, and Z. We think we can do it and we just need to do it better. I mean, that's a big well, conversation. Yeah. We just had the respect because it worked. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> <laughs> it might've been a different story. <laughs> 